Greetings, I'm Kendrick Solis, and we will be presenting Chapter 2, A Happy Death. Hi, my name is Elijah Tsai, and I'll also be talking about Chapter 2 titled A Happy Death. Here we have the title photo of the chapter, and we could already notice a few key details that will be prevalent all throughout the chapter. So, um, this follows right after the death of the father Bruce because of a truck accident. Um, and Allison tries to dwell on the fact whether or not he killed himself or if, or if it was merely an accident. So in the title picture, we see a grave for her dad. And the most dominant figure here would be the obelisk acting as the gravestone. And then later on, it is mentioned that the obelisk is a symbol for life. Which is ironic because um, the purpose of the gravestone is to symbolize death. And then this will later be unexplained. Um, we can also say that it represents the life of her father as an artificer because he was always so keen and um, stuck with extravagant furnitures and accessories. So um, looking at the title itself, um, it's called A Happy Death. And this is already one big irony because um, how could death be happy? And it already gives us a glimpse of the absurdity of death which is prominent which is a prominent concept in the rest of the chapter um so you notice that there's also an american flag um right beside the obelisk and then an american flag placed on the obelisks are usually put on soldiers or it symbolizes like honor or the life the person had lived and then this flag um will later be thro thrown out by allison because um she called it a cheesy flag as if her father really never lived up to these ideals. And then there's also some shadows which could be um, um, the family of the, of the deceased, um, but we are not too sure about it. In page 29 of chapter 2, it was stated how if their father decided to um, die, he had succeeded with such a plum. So what is a plum? It is the self-confidence or assurance in a demanding situation. And with this, um, despite Allison and her mother not being that close to their father, where they were both very distant to him, um, they both understand him at a certain level. And with this, they kind of were able to conclude that their father did indeed commit suicide. And in the context that even if their father did not commit suicide, accepting it that their father committed suicide was a form of acceptance to his death. Even if it was or wasn't true, it gave the family an assurance that he died for a reason. And with this, anachronism is something that doesn't belong in a particular time period. And that is seen through the obelisk. The obelisk of the father is what his chosen headstone was. And it greatly symbolizes Bruce's life as, as an artificer. And as an artificer, he, was, he uses this obelisk as it symbolizes life. And that's very ironic considering how he uses something that symbolizes life as a headstone. With this, it is also seen how the headstone is shaped somewhat shaped of a penis. And Alison Bechdel humorously states how it was a shape that he was fixated on his entire life. With this, um, in the first panel, we could see how it is a very dark, dark color. It can be seen how it's a private conversation between Allison and her mother, and it is not meant to be heard by others. With this, the moment-to-moment -moment transitions within the panels show how you ha there's a certain level of understanding needed from the viewers. It is a certain level of understanding to conclude how the family decides to choose how the, the dad committed suicide, and he didn't just die of an accident. So with this, this leads to the thesis statement of uh, the topic sentence for the page coming to the conclusion that their own father committed suicide though it was painful it gave much closure to the uncertainty of the situation so in the funeral home um allison's grandmother often told them stories of her father when they were younger and one of these stories was when he wandered off one time and got stuck in the mud until a male man named mort saw him and brought him back home so in this page, we see that the mailman was described as a reverse gr Grim Reaper or we could say that it was sort of like the opposite of death, like an angel of life.
So he saved Allison's father from being stuck in the mud. And based on what we could see, um, I feel like that being stuck in the mud can symbolize death. Because um, when the children started to wonder, like, what happens if Mort never found him? Or would he have died if Mort never found him? Um, the grandmother just responds to this by saying, um, she doesn't really know what could have happened, which further emphasizes um, how uncertain death truly is. And this could be related to how Allison says, um, maybe he didn't see the truck coming because of the divorce. Um, which is like him wandering around and until he got stuck in the mud. And then part of this chapter also says how Allison always pictured Martin as a milkman instead of a mailman. So in real life, she was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive behavior. And with this, it kind of questions the credibility of how she remembers what happened in her childhood. Because um, most of the story is told with a first person perspective. And then, in terms of how it was um, carefully um, formed, um, the author effectively uses the panels to depict the flow of time between um, the memory with her grandmother telling the stories and the flashback of her father being stuck in the mud. In page 47 of chapter 2, Alison Bechdel talked about the myth of Sisyphus. So, what is the myth of Sisyphus? The myth of Sisyphus is the punishment for his rebellion against the gods. And with this, he has to push a boulder up to the peak of the mountain. And once it falls back to the ground, he has to repeat the process of pushing it back up. Um, With this, Alison Bechdel states how the definition of the absurd for Camus, which is his term for death, death, is that the universe is irrational and human life is meaningless. With this, um, it is seen how Alison tries to show how one should not kill himself, where she extracts this from Albert Camus's definition of absurdity or death. So according to Camus, the cycle of Sisyphus is similar to human life, where we are faced by certain obstacles, certain things that make us feel like we should die. But with this, it is seen how the beauty of life is seen within overcoming these obstacles, overcoming these things that are Similar to death, the, the pain and the struggles within human life is what brings out the beauty of overcoming these struggles. However, it is seen in page 47 where her father highlighted the part stated by Albert Camus, which was, the subject of this essay is precisely the relationship between the absurd and suicide, where suicide is a solution to the absurd. So, Alison Bechdel stated, stated how her father was a haphazard scholar. So this means that someone, her father was somewhat lost and problematic. And this is reasonable as a homosexual that is pressured within the early 1900s, the, the late 1900s. And it's also with this unstable relationship with his wife and family. It took a toll on Alison, uh, on her Bruce Bechdel's mental health. And it can be seen where, how he perceives Camus's theory on the absurdity of death as he believes that suicide is a solution to the absurd. And this just comes to show how Bruce has a different perspective on death, wherein suicide may indeed have been a good idea for him, a good solution to his issues, as he has lost the meaning to live. So with this, I'd like to state a quote from Albert Camus. The only way to deal with the free world is to become absolutely free, that your very existence is an act of rebellion. So this was not captured by Bruce Bechdel, as he missed the point of Albert Camus, where his point was the point of living was to overcome these struggles. It is a rebellion against the the struggles held against us. So with this, I would like to bring up the topic sentence for this page, which, which is, as a mentally challenged individual, Bruce's perception of suicide as a solution to the absurd represents the majority of the depressed. Struggling, struggling to find meaning and acceptance by carrying on their own, by carrying their own boulders. So here, Alison um further explains more about her relationship with her dad and how his work uh kinda influenced him to commit suicide. Um, her father occasionally sent letters to her about the different bodies he deals with. Um, like. Uh, suicide related, death related, and then this could be 
a form of affection or bonding that a few bondings that she had with her father and then she mentions that she compared her father like Sisyphus um that he's an absurd absurd hero who shoulders his own burden and then relating to this to what happened prior about how the father uh, underlined how suicide is a solution to the absurd it further supports the possibility of this being a suicide so Alison's father always had some certain certain familiarity with death because of his job and then it was uh, this is how Alison began uh, began to wonder um, if he came to an understanding that why postpone death when death is inevitable so um, again this further supports how um, how Alison constantly tries to figure out and try to piece things together um, if um, the father really tried to commit suicide or not. Um, so, in the start, um, we see that there's a transition of mood between the letters of the father. Like, sometimes, um, they're, the letters are like, okay lang, um, showing some sort of um, affection towards Allison, like just sharing his job experience. But um, other times he was despairing, as mentioned, and to me that, uh, as shown here, is like the punishment of Sisyphus. Um, in his story, um, he was a Greek king who avoided death twice by uh, either tricking the gods or escaping death. Um, but in the end, um, they end up catching him and him having to suffer. So, um, this is like telling us that, um. Her father is like Sisyphus, except he just gave up. Instead of trying to um, go through his entire life trying to figure out how to avoid that, stay healthy, exercise, he just came to uh, He fills the entire page with words, with letters, and then just one picture of the father doing work, which could further highlight his despair or the blandness of his life. In page 54 of chapter 2, Alison Beck does talked about une mort imbecile, which is a direct translation for a stupid death. So uh, as death as a form of stupidity, it coincides with Albert Camus' definition of death, where death is the absurd. So it shows how whether or not Bruce really indeed committed, committed suicide, it left an emotional toll to his family, wherein death as the absurd, it comes to show how death Albert, it comes to show how Bruce Bechdel perceived death dif perceived death differently, wherein he thought it, it was a solution to the absurd, even if Albert Camus concluded that death is not a solution to the absurd. With this, Alison Bechdel also talked about being stuck in the mud. So being stuck in the mud was is nowhere close to dying, but it could be a signifier signified to how being stuck in the mud was related to Bruce Bechdel. So as a signifier, it really being stuck in the mud where Bruce Bechdel was buried and he is stuck in the mud through his by being buried under the mud. He's stuck there forever as he's he's dead. And he's stuck and it is the reality where Bruce Bechdel really died. On the other hand, this is signified stuck being stuck in the mud comes to show the pro close proximity of Bruce's burial to Fun Home and his own house. And it represents his personal significance to the setting, which is Fun Home and his own house. As an artificer, his this setting played a detrimental uh, played an important role rather in um his characterization as a father and basically his relationship with Alison. So this also shows the duality of reality and fiction. So being stuck in the mud, um it raised a few concerns whether whether the memory of Alison Bechdel was really indeed reliable. And this can be seen through the milkman or mailman, where Alison was confused whether or not the mailman or milkman saved her father 
from being stuck in the mud. However, it this this shows the boundaries of fiction and reality where many of what Alison Bechdel stated in her Fun Home comic, um, it shows how the, the fiction was one of the ways Alison coped with her father's death. Whether or not it was the truth or it was made up through fiction, it was her coping mechanism to her father's death. And it was somewhat uh, that led it's something that it was something that led them closer as a father and daughter. And this it was what sooner or later led Alison to accept her father's death. So in terms of panels in comics, it can be seen that the last panel was is quite big. It consists of more than half of the page. And this um, encapsulates the time period of the comics. It shows how Allison was lying down beside her father. An older version of Allison was lying down beside her father's gravestone. And it merely represents the absence of her father throughout her life. And the larger panel here shows just emphasizes on the time of on the long length of her father being absent, where it was quite a long time that her father was not physically present in her life. So with this, we could conclude the topic sentence on Overall, Alison struggles in trying to accept her father's death using representations through Una Mort Imbecile and stuck in, the, stuck in the Mud and Suicide as ways to face the reality that her dad died. So after putting all our summaries together, we came to the t- conclusion that despite the concept of death being so apparent within the lives of the Beckdell family, um, coping with their father's death is even more difficult to accept as a reality. So it is all throughout in the chapter, we see that death is uncertain and absurd. And we see how um, the father's familiarity with death could have caused him to commit suicide or there is certain parallelisms with Greek figures such as Sisyphus. But in the end, it is just the journey of Alison trying to prove the father's suicide how she tries to piece together this information to really give her a strong conviction that the father did commit suicide. And the fact is that there is really no way of telling whether he did it or not. Um, it cannot be determined. But this act of her trying to prove her father's death um, consoles Alison as, like what is said earlier on, um, there is more... Um, it is better to understand that the father committed suicide rather than it was an accident. So this entire um, chapter was about her trying to uh, cope up with the death of her father. So that's it for our report in chapter 2, A Happy Death. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>